we have this extremely nationalist, populist, right-wing government in power that has been in power for 10 years. Uh, they have played their cards, their populist cards, very, very well. They have essentially created a state that's uh, completely controlled by the party in power. And they have amassed so much wealth that that particular political party, which is known as, by a very strange, long abbreviation, VMRO DPMNAE, I won't even tell you what that stands for. That particular party, which came into power in 2006, has now officially become one of the wealthiest political parties in all of Europe. And we are talking about one of the poorest countries in Europe having one of the wealthiest political parties. Uh, there is absolute lack of transparency in terms of willings and dealings. The media uh, have become rather suppressed. Macedonia fell down on Freedom House list in terms of freedom of the media and independence. Um, money talks and all kinds of things happen. So right now we have the election campaign there and the opposition is highly fractured. They have all kinds of internal disagreements as well, which doesn't help the situation. But what you see here is a selection of photographs by three excellent photographers from Macedonia. And I don't know them in person. When I approached Jack and I said, I would like to show here photographs from the so-called colorful revolution, he said, fine, how are you going to find the photographers? I said, well, I'll figure out a way. So I approached these three people who had been taking a lot of pictures of the citizen protests that were taking place in Macedonia throughout the summer of 2016. And these photographers immediately gave me high-resolution images to choose from. Uh, their names are Robert Atanasovsky, Kire Galevsky, and Vancho Jambaski. They're all first-rate photojournalists, and oftentimes Reuters Associated Press uses some of their images when they do coverage of uh, the situation in Macedonia. But before we talk about the photographs themselves, I would like to just give you a brief, brief overview of how this colorful revolution came to be over the last few months. So, um, it begins with an amnesty that was passed by the President of the Republic of Macedonia on April 12th. All of a sudden, he shows up and says, I'm giving amnesty to all of the politicians who are currently being investigated for various kinds of abuses of law. And the riots began on April 13th, a day after this global amnesty of politicians. Now, who was investigating these politicians? It wasn't the regular courts or the judiciary, because it's highly uh, controlled also by the governing party. So under the pressure of the European Commission and international community in general and United States, there was a new independent judicial body or prosecution, special prosecution's office that was established in December of 2015. I know you're smiling. Three ladies are heading the special prosecutor's office. And what's even more interesting is that they came from nowhere. They have a team of nine people who are very well paid, highly independent. They have come under all kinds of pressure, but they are essentially investigating political corruption, rampant political corruption. So the president comes out on April 12 and says, in the interest of peace in the country, so that we do not have more tensions, I am giving amnesty to all of the politicians being investigated by the special prosecutor's office. Now, what's interesting about the special prosecutor's office uh, also, you see the three ladies, the one in the middle is the lady in charge, Katica Janeva, sorry, this is advancing a little bit too fast. But the one to the left of her is uh, Ms. Nejana Ristovska, and the one on the right is Fatime Fetai. And you will hear the name Fatime Fetai. She's Albanian Macedonian, actually of, of mixed parentage. But the important thing is that we have this uh, multi-ethnic society with about 20 to 25% of Albanian people. And usually Albanian women, uh, Albanians in general have been more traditional in that society, so you do not have too many of these young Albanian women who are so prominent. It, the situation is changing and has changed over the last 10, 15 years, but she is exceptional. So she is actually the spokesperson for the, for, during the press conferences of the special prosecutor's office. So they work under tremendous pressure. So the riots began already on April 13. These are people gathering in town, burning the picture of the president, demolishing the president's office on the first night of the protests, 
because they thought that this whole amnesty is absolutely illegal and that it's an uh, effort, essentially, on the part of the government to maintain itself, as in many other cases. These are people calling for resignation, of course. Farewell, Nicola, says the sign. Nicola is the prime minister uh, until recently, who is now the leader and was traditionally the leader of the right-wing populist party. So many, many signs like this came up. And as you can see, there were all kinds of people, many, many young people, but also people of diverse ethnic groups, diverse social strata. It was very interesting how they bonded together. And by the way, Macedonia has seen a lot of protests over the last few years. But this wave of protests during the summer of 2016 is by far the largest and the con most continuous one. Here you have actually the protesters carrying in front of them these little uh, dolls with the faces of some of the key people from the uh, right-wing party. The lady in orange is actually until recently the Minister of Internal Affairs or Police. Next to her you have the guy who is Minister of Transport and Infrastructure and there have been all kinds of dirty deals in that arena. And then you have another politician and then next to them you see the guy who was the, until recently, this guy on the very left in the black and white uh, sort of prison uniform is basically first cousin of the Prime Minister and he was until very recently the head of the intelligence service. So it's one big family. Everything is in the family. So, here you have a picture of a, of a Macedonian and Albanian flag tied together, and behind them you see Turkish flag. I already mentioned that the most dominant minority in Macedonia is Albanian, 20 to 25 percent. They are Muslims, the Macedonian Slavs are primarily Orthodox Christians, so there have been always sort of parallel existence living side by side. Uh, we have tried we have tried as society to become more sort of integrated, but it's always a challenge, especially in the Balkan environment. But Albanians have been fairly